Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about ingredients for life discovered in Perseus molecular cloud in space, 1,000 light years away. I did a recent podcast on a new meteorite class, and it was interesting because it had talked about numerous, um, well, one in particular, a new way of tracking meteorites as they hit Earth, and they were able to get to the, uh, you know, the meteorite faster, less contamination, etc. And it was discovered that there were some interesting properties on it, and that there could have been signs of life in it. So this one, I was interested because it almost connects it in a way. But these signs of life, we're uh, finding things all over the place. This just interests me. I've talked about this, what a nerd I am, and I just, science is really interesting to me. So this is going to be a normal podcast with my sciences and stuff where I read the article. I'll put the link in the description. Usually, I think I maybe forgot once, but I, I went up and re-edited it. So you could actually see the article for yourself. There are highlighted links that lead to other things. You can see where the abstract is where they did the testing and they can get pretty in depth. But for this, it'll just be pretty quick. I'll read mostly word for word the article and maybe put my two cents in here and there. But again, this is an article about the ingredients for life discovered in Perseus molecular cloud in space, 1,000 light years from Earth. I'm using the space.com website. Can I give credit? Who is this by? But by Robert Lay. All right, there you go. All right, so I'll begin. A soup of molecules in a distant star forming cloud contains compounds that are considered the essential building blocks for life, astronomers have found. These molecules can contribute to the construction of amino acids, which themselves form the basis of genetic material and are believed to have been essential in the development of life, oh, in the development of the first microorganisms on Earth. Again, there are like highlighted words you can hear that'll get you to other links. I'll continue. The prebiotic molecules were found in a star cluster within the Perseus molecular cloud called IC348. The stars in the cluster are estimated to be very young, between 2 and 3 million years old. For comparison, our middle-aged sun is around 4.6 billion years old. middle-aged <laughs> the cloud is an extraordinary laboratory of organic chemistry susan uh oh here we go iglesias groth a scientist at institute de astrophysica de canarias <laughs> and research on author and research co-author said in a statement there are complex molecules of pure carbon which often occur as building blocks for the key molecules of life. And they show a diagram and an image. The 500 light year wide Perseus cloud in which these molecules were discovered is one of the closest active star forming regions to the solar system at just 1000 light years away. Many of the infant stars found in the cluster within the cloud are surrounded by disks, disks uh-oh. Right, well, you know what? Fuck it. Let's leave it in. By, by disks of gas and dust. It is within these protoplanetary disks that dense clumps of material collapse under the pull of gravity to form planets, moons, asteroids, and comets. The usual building blocks of planetary systems that arise in a process similar to the one that once birthed our solar system. The detection of prebiotic molecules at such a site, and so close to the star cluster IC348, could indicate that as young planets form, they accrete material that contains molecules that eventually contribute to the formation of complex organic molecules. Quote, These key molecules could have been supplied to the nascent planets, and, yeah, I guess that's right, <laughs> in the protoplanetary disk and cloud in this way to help produce their a route towards the molecules of life. Marina Marin Dubrinik, a scientist at 
Universidad <laughs> Policentia de Cartagena and research co-author said in a statement. Oh, this is a fucked up article. I should have done a little more. <laughs> Inglacius Groth, who also found giant carbon molecules called fullerenes in the same cloud in 2019, and the team discovered the presence of molecular hydrogen, H2, hydroxyl, OH, water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2, and ammonia, NH3, as well as several carbon-based molecules. These later molecules could play a role in forming more complex hydrocarbons. And prebiotic molecules including hydrogen cyanide, HCN, ethane, C2H6, hexatrine, and benzene. The team also found more complex molecules like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PHA, and more fullerenes in the form of carbon-60 and carbon-70. IC348 seems to be very rich and diverse in its molecular content, Iglesias Groth said. The novelty is that we see the molecules in the diffused gas from which stars and protoplanetary disks are forming. Iglesias Groth and Marin Dubrinik made the discovery using data collected by NASA's now-retired Spitzer Space Telescope, and they intend to follow up the observations with more powerful James Webb Space Telescope. That's interesting. One prior discovery leading to more inquisitive minds, and then they go and they find it. And what I find interesting about articles like this when they talk about something a thousand light years away, there was a conversation I had outside with uh, people come from the synagogue, I think it's called, about how the earth is 5,700 years old. And it's just like, I think it's almost criminal. But anyway, I'll continue with this. Quote, the spectroscopic capacity of the JWST, that's the James Webb uh, Telescope, could provide details about the spatial distribution of all these molecules and extend the present search to others which are more complex, giving higher sensitivity and resolution which are essential to confirm the very probable presence of amino acids in this gas and in the other star-forming regions, Iglesias Growth concluded. And there's a link to an actual uh, abstract of the study they did. And these can get like a little crazy, but it's good to see them there and when you do some of these science things, a lot can be put under like clickbait or something. And I like to be like a little verify. And when you look through the article, lots of the blue underlined stuff is, uh, you know, could lead you to other interesting things and other studies. Again, this type of stuff fascinates me. How we could discover um, that there are, that is the potential for young star forming clusters to produce these elements of life, the building blocks. And we can start, you know, looking at, like, how our origins happen in, in a real science-based way. And again, my conversation that happened recently about it just seemed so weird to me that I'm getting, you know, the, you know, the, the answer to how old do you think the earth is is 5,700 years old and everybody stuck to it except for one person who I thought you know said 4 billion and he corrected himself but however there was a rabbi coming down the block and I was like oh excuse me can I ask you a question and I said you know how old is the earth can you ask me like how old do you think the earth is and he's he paused, and for what I think, he gave a tell, you know, whatever. And he says, 5,007 years old, and he keeps walking. But as I look back at the, um, the younger men, the kids, whatever you want to call them, I thought I saw one of them look like he knew the guy was lying. And that's kind of like my, you know, it rubs me the wrong way when I look back on things like this. Uh, you know, I don't mind about beliefs and stuff, but when it interferes with, like, science and facts you know i'm fascinated by how we could have ingredients for life in a molecular cloud a thousand light years from earth what what after i go past five thousand like because of uh what some book says 
it just rubs me the wrong way and it's just if i'm gonna sit around and believe in a higher power and stuff that's fine uh, you know it's, it's doctrine and stuff when you can't refute things like this and the answers you get when you ask them certain questions like it's crazy like uh, so fossils are a, a are a trick and that type of thing kind of always rubbed me the wrong way when i look at um you know how i handle some of these science things it's it's not only is it a pure fascination a joy and an excitement about science in itself but it's also an admonishment of like religion and how much doctrine can interfere with things there's no way you can't teach your beliefs without admitting you know the fact that the earth is older than 5,700 years old 700 years old and I wonder if it's a little form of a basis of a lot of my um, you know science stuff that you know I do over and over but again it is honestly a fascinating thing for me to think we can extrapolate this type of data and it's from an old telescope and now we're going to use a new telescope we can see the distribution of these molecules the math and all that stuff just boggles my mind but that wonder that you know unanswerable questions that we all had that might have led us to religion or whatever and they're there with me they're there with all human beings to a certain extent but this is what i'd rather you know stake my claim on that yeah, we have an estimate with a margin of error for how old the Earth is, but we know it's not 5,700 years old. So stars from other galaxies, what are they, like light display tricks, to, all that stuff. But when I want to get down to the sciences, I love websites like this. I love doing podcasts on it. It just gets me really, you know, jazzed about what the potential is on how technology is moving forward. What they did with an old telescope from the data from 2019. Now we're going to go with the new James Webb telescope. And that thing has been sending some of the most spectacular fucking pictures ever. And images. Oh, if you want to get technical, I yeah, you know, you know it's a piece together thing. And all that data coming back and forth. I think it's such a wondrous time for, you know, development with uh, all our technologies. And it goes back to some of the things I do bring up in some of these podcast and that is the fact that you know where does the benefit for humankind end and just the sheer curiosity of us and maybe that has to do with things like going to mars or you know where you're spending billions of dollars where we could just end world hunger and you know that type of argument but i think things like this you know using data from old things and going over it and now using a new telescope i think that's the perfect uh, balance between you know what we know what we could learn and it might not like cure cancer or something and who knows if it does i mean but can you know we can start solidifying that you know life can form it around the universe and who knows how big and vast you know and, and wondrous it is in all different places we've got insane images of the background radiation and people going over we even have people who almost got a you know a Nobel Prize, but they were wrong, and it's caught. And again, these science podcasts really, really interest me. I get a joy from doing them, and for a long time afterwards, it resonates with me in my mind and or how I'm viewing things. And for me, to like think, oh, we're gonna get you know closer to finding out that in certain planetary systems, maybe you know everything has to be right. You know, we get that. That they, life could arise on its own. We don't need a, you know, big guy in the sky, you know, and make clearly obvious wrong facts or quote unquote facts. And maybe that is a little bit of a you know inspiration or reason why I do some of the sciences. But again, I really truly find excitement and joy in the wonder of science and what we're finding out about space and going to mars potentially but i do realize some of the arguments where hey you know how much money are we going to spend on another collider to, to smash molecules together and i've had this talk with some people and i try to go online and you know at least get an informed opinion about stuff but again we found that there might be the signs of life in a molecular cloud a thousand years away gives me so many thoughts and so many questions and I can at least depend on 
the trail of evidence that led to some of these, you know, discoveries. And that's what fascinates me about science and just looking at the universe and like some of these pictures and images that they send back, they look like certain structures and it's just awe inspiring. And if you get technical and you get nerdy and you you know you like the abstracts, which I do sometimes, and I want to see some stuff, but I don't know half of the words. But people are doing the work. They're out there. They got a fascination and a curiosity. And we need people like that. Scientists doing the best they can. They're human like everybody else, but they're dedicated to finding facts and leading one fact to another to bring up a theory or a hypothesis. And who knows what something like this could lead to with future generations. Maybe we'll get, you know, generational traveling ships and we'll go into a star system that we know could potentially have the signs of life. And there were also other things. Like I did podcast on, um, like a full podcast on why there aren't aliens or there could be and what all those type of theories are. And it could be so difficult to sustain life past a certain point where they can develop the cognitive functions to be considered, you know, where we are in any sense. And there are people, a lot of people talk about the other side of that, where, you know, they're millions of years ahead of us or whatever. It could be that there, it is so difficult that there aren't places like that. And that you, Earth could be more unique in that way. That, yeah, life spawns in different you know, iterations and, you know, whatever value we give it, if it's grass or, you know, microbial and et cetera, et cetera. But do they have, a, you know, millions of years of evolutionary data? No. And did they become, you know, industrial, et cetera? Because I think it's fantasizing that, you know, wonder and fear way of, oh, there are civilizations out there millions of years more advanced than us. Well, there's a chance that they're, they're not. And I think that's another reason why we do these type of science experiments. And again, it just fascinates me that they're taking data from 2019, uh, getting honed in on the area, like questions, and then now they got a super amazing telescope. You could just do a whole thing on that. I did a podcast on that too, the James Webb Telescope. And uh, they did a press conference with the, the president once. It's so beautiful some of these pictures were. And it excites me and it gets me really too up for this type of stuff. And I look forward to constantly checking and you know putting little notes to make my podcast because this is like what i think eventually it'll people will gravitate to in my mind you know eventually you know more religions will fall to the wayside and we'll see you know maybe we can find it will help us hone uh you know our abilities to detect or make it so slightly ap- of informed opinion about can there be life out there again some of those articles i read and i did were fascinating to me still it goes over my mind and it you know it always keeps me interested and i think that's a good thing for general public and you know you don't have to go to college and get billion degrees and do your own experiments to at the very least trust some of the facts and Keep, you know, an informed opinion about things rather than teaching generations of people, you know, that the earth is fucking 5,700 years old, whatever. And that's almost insulting in a way. And you have institutions doing this. So I'll keep doing these science podcasts. I'll keep, you know, hopefully coming across as someone who generally loves this stuff. And it's unlimited, uh imagination and potential to just think of these things and how they could affect people in different ways who knows what these type of breakthroughs will go through and what they'll lead to and i don't know if it'll be like a medical breakthrough or something or just our knowledge our adding a little bit more information to the questions that again just are with every human being and all of our evolution to, for the 5,700 years again I'm doing a fucking ironic thing that we've been doing this and look where we are now finding ingredients for life in a molecular cloud a thousand miles away 
And how they do some of these things is just fascinating. How through certain ways of scanning or taking pictures, they can use, you know, the signs and then develop, you know, ways, different way light hits things and they can tell the density and the makeup of certain things. And the more powerful these things get, you know, the outer reaches, what was our outer reaches of, you know, potential knowledge is getting increased. New, like, planets that could be like Earth closer than we thought. This space is so big, it's so vast, it's insane. And I do tend to agree with the, there's probably life out there, but, you know, in, in what stage? Maybe it happens a lot, but without the right, you know, mixture of soup and whatever you want to call it, without the right ingredients, it can never get to us. And I think that's another fascinating aspect of this. And all this information, keep piling it up. We got plenty of people out there trying to do the right thing and really dedicated to the science and the truth of things, not just feelings, as quoting my motto. So I hope this fascinates people. Learn about this stuff. Science is fascinating. Kids should all over the world be informed about certain things we are we know is fact. And I know is fact the earth is not five thousand seven hundred years old. We are very, you know, superstitious and we look for answers and everything and that's okay. But I think it's, you know, time where we teach another generation about these things and instill in them the wonder and you know potential joy and science and where it leads us as a fucking species as a society so i'll end that here hope everybody's doing well my best to you and yours till next time